Well, hello there ladies and gents, I'm Tammy Sopnewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about lighting and the importance of it in your video. Cause right now I'm just using regular old house lights. Adding a little bit of a small investment to your YouTube studio can make your videos go from this to this. And all I did was just add a few very budget friendly lights to the studio. When I first started my channel, I would watch other people's videos and I'm like, why does their video look like that? And mine looks like it's filmed on a phone, even though I invested the money to get a nice camera and a nice lens. What, why does it look so different? And the answer was not only that I get a good light, but how you modify the lighting. In other words, what are you putting in front of the light so it just doesn't look like a big bright light shining down on you? And that led me down a rabbit hole of looking for lights that I could afford that would make my videos look like those famous YouTubers videos. But you don't have to go searching down those rabbit holes because I'm gonna tell you right now the two things that I have in this video that are making the lighting look soft and beautiful. Specifically, the key light that I'm using is the Kolber CL100. And I have a soft box on that light to make the light look soft and pretty on my face. And that is the Laufa's soft box lantern. It has the setup of those paper lanterns that you see hanging around and it makes the light look super soft and super beautiful. This is probably one of the most inexpensive soft boxes that you can get. I think on Amazon for the size that I have, it's like $54 and this is for the medium size one. I think it's like 28 inches long. Now Peter McKinnon, all of his lighting is aperture lighting and that lighting can be like two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. I don't have that kind of money to be spending on studio lighting. However, now there's companies like Culber that are making very similar lights to Aperture. And as a matter of fact, I think this particular light has things in it that the Aperture Amran 100D doesn't even have. And it's less money. I'm not saying that Aperture is not good. That's not what I'm saying, of course. I'm just saying that they set a particular standard and companies are trying to chase them for that standard with a little bit of a discount so that their products look more enticing to you know, potential customers. But just like all these companies are chasing Aperture, Aperture's chasing other companies too. They're putting out lights at a discount price that, you know, they would consider going up against Ari and Mole Richardson. So, you know, it's it's a cycle. Okay, so now that you know the backstory about the Culver CL100 and how it really rivals that Aperture MRAN line, let's talk about everything you get when you purchase the Culver CL100. <laughs> And of course, you're going to get the light. The light comes in a beautiful carrying case. You're also going to get a reflector dish, a remote control, which is something that the aperture lights do not have. And of course, you're going to get the power brick and the extension cable. And the extension cable that goes from the power brick into the light has an MX-16 plug and locks on there with a locking bolt so that it doesn't accidentally get pulled off. I mean, that carrying case was just a nice extra touch. And they also send you a protective cover for the LED chip. So if you do decide to move the light, you have it in the bag, those chips are going to be secure. Now let's talk about the thing, the big thing that sets this light apart and I think makes it better than the Aperture MRAN 100D. The fact is this is a bi-color light, meaning that there's two different colors in this light. Your Kelvin range is going to go from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6,500 Kelvin. Daylight is 5,600 Kelvin. Once you go below 3,500, that color is going to be known as the tungsten lighting. It's like an orangey kind of light. Anything above 6,000, that's more of a bluish light. That's something that you would use to emulate moonlight. The Aperture MRAN is only daylight balanced, meaning that it's only at all the time. We're bringing this down to 2700 Kelvin. If you wanted to emulate candle flicker or a bonfire, it's really gonna make that look more realistic than something that's at 6500 Kelvin. There's a really nice LED display on the back of the light. There's only like four buttons and a knob, so it's very easy to use. You know, when I got the hat on, it means I need a haircut, right? 
Now the shell of the light is plastic, so that's gonna help to cut down on the heat and the weight of the light. There's a built-in fan. You have control over the fan. You can leave the fan on smart mode, which detects when the light is heating up, it's going to cool it down. Now, like a lot of other budget things, they have to cut corners some places, and I'm gonna tell you where they cut the corners. Where the light tilts, instead of a thumb screw, I wish they would make that a yoke. Power options for the light only go up in increments of five. So five, 10, 15, that I wish it went in increments of one. Can't have everything, I guess. And the mount of the light is a Bowens mount. So any softbox that you have that has a Bowens mount is going to be able to go on to this light. There is a nice holder for a very inexpensive umbrella to put in there. I'm going to show you how to mount this softbox onto this light. How I get these particular softboxes onto a Bowens mount light is to hold it by two of the spokes. I mean, I don't know that's what they're called. But to me, they look like spokes. So I just hold it by two of the spokes and I match it up to where the divots are in the light and on the soft box and you just push it in and you rotate it and it's locked in, perfect. And as you can see, it really does resemble one of those paper lanterns. So being that it's not a directional light, it's known as omnidirectional. It's all over, casting light across the entire room. Let's say you wanted to control the spill of this light. With the Laufa softbox, they do send you two skirts. So there's Velcro on the softbox and Velcro on the skirts. So you just wanna match up the skirt Velcro with the light Velcro and apply it. And there is Velcro on the inside of the flags as well and on the side so that you can attach them. And let's say that you wanted to move them in any fashion, you can actually roll it up and make it more of that traditional style softbox. If you wanna collapse this lantern softbox, all you have to do is press down to release that bar from the hook. And there you go. This is pretty much how it looks when it comes out of the bag. So you don't have to worry about assembling the actual pieces of the lantern onto the spoke. All you do is just press down and hook that and you do get a nice carrying case to go along with it. I think the Lantern Softbox is the way to go. If you have a beauty channel, if you're doing makeup, if you're doing hair, I think that this is a really pretty light. So when it comes to cable management, all they give you is a Velcro strip. And it's like, okay, well that can gather the cable on the ground, I guess, but that power brick, you know, it's a, it's a pretty sizable power brick. What am I supposed to do with that? So this is what I did with that. So all I had to do to keep this power brick from just being, you know, free hanging from the light here, I just took a small rig clamp and attached it to my light stand. And I just allowed the power brick to sit on there. So basically the small rig clamp is holding it up. The Velcro is just bracing it. In my house, we call that Polish engineering. This is, this is a hard one for me because I'm going back and forth between giving it four stars and four and a half stars. Definitely not a five star light, Def definitely not that. You know, if it just had a couple little extra things, I think, I think we could have made it to the four and a half, but I think as it stands right now, it's a four star light. I mean, of course I gave the light four stars. So yes, I'm going to recommend it for 199 bucks. I definitely recommend the softbox too. I love the way that the lighting definitely looks. It's such a difference from my normal setup because it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just, for, this probably was not the best video for me to wear a hat in. Thanks again to the people over at Culber and at Per Gear for sending me these budget options. I really had a good time reviewing them and trying them out. That's gonna do it here for me today. I really do appreciate that you take your time to watch my videos. Thank you very much. Till next time, please wear your sunblock and call your mom and dad just to say how much you love them. Oh,